my name is Audrey Decker. And I'm Thibaut Decker. And we are the co-founders of the non-profit organization Street Art for Mankind. So um, Street Art for Mankind was born of a, a journey that started in 2015. So at the time, we were already American citizens and uh, we had a digital agency and we have, were pitching a crowd about guerrilla marketing. And in that crowd was Nobel Peace Prize, t the, the teams of the Nobel Peace Prize, Kala Shachati, who had the Nobel Peace Prize with Malala. Uh, everybody knew Malala, uh, who know, you know, but not too many knew um, Kala Shachati, who actually got the Nobel Peace Prize for fighting child labor and trafficking. And to be very honest, uh, we didn't need know much about the cause either at that time, but we felt really moved as parents ourselves. And, um, and we, when they approached us and said, okay, can you help us to raise awareness on child labor? We said, well, we know artists uh, you know, work in the street and you're talking about children of the street. So I guess that maybe we can, we can pull up something and create um, a, big, a, big, a big exhibition. And we were at that time based in Miami. So that's, that's what we did. So yeah, it, it all started really with an encounter with Nobel Kailash Acharti, a will to do something, an event, to help him get more visibility, raise awareness, raise funds. Uh, so we got 35 artists at that time coming to Miami and perform on two con on containers that we stacked too high, a lot of canvases around and that we sold at that time. The UN heard about it at that time. The French ambassador to the UN actually heard about it and asked us to come to, uh, to New York to do an exhibition, really contingent to that, to that uh, immediately. Then the International Labor Organization heard about our work and asked us to curate and produce murals for their 100 years. And then it never stopped. And from child trafficking, which remains today our roots and really what we, you know, the main cause that drove us in and that we continue to finance because we finance every year Red and Rescues to save kids uh, across the world. Yeah. Uh, we still talk about more causes than just trafficking today and all the 17 SDGs, but actually social and, and uh, environmental topics and justice in general. And, and the funny thing is that actually our exhibition, the first the exhibition at the United Nations was the first street art exhibition ever at the United Nations headquarters. So it was pretty exciting to have everybody so excited to bring street art, you know, inside the United Nations for such an important cause as well, child labor and trafficking. And yes, the ILO invited us for the 100 years. We did uh, several murals around the headquarters here in, in New York and um, and then, uh, and then, yes, we moved actually to New York to be closer, you know, to do more work from there. And then, yes, as Thibault said, it never stops. We, for example, we work with UN Women. We have a series that goes globally, France, Mexico, London, etc., Berlin, to talk about women empowerment. Uh, we have a series with the United Nations Environment Program and FAO, which is about ecosystem restoration. The plan is to do 50 of them uh, by 2030. Uh, we work with uh, UNESCO, uh, we have an education for all, um, mural activation all around the world, uh, and, and, and more agencies and, and councils, them all. But So yeah, what we do is really, we, we paint big canvases in center of cities to stop people in their day to day. The idea is, with those big canvases, of course, beautifying because it's art and inspiring, but it's also to create conversations. And that's really what we want to do. We curate, we work with spectacular artists, over 100, I would say, across the world that want to come, that have a big heart and that want to perform. So we, we create those canvases, but actually we create pieces that connect to each other. So outdoor museums, that's really what we want to do and what we do across the world in all the cities that actually connect. So people then for free, get to walk like in a museum thanks to an app that we developed uh, and they can use it as an audio guide and go from wall to wall get inspired hear about the artist like you would in a museum sense and then get something get do something so trigger action is really something that we we love and and this app is already is also that for that so you can do it live when you're in the streets but you can also do it i mean if you're behind a computer the idea is to get as many people create kind of that snowball effect that people want to act and, and get it's not always about money it's about you know finding your cause and your heart and going and and, and that's what we want to trigger really with our art. 
and actually that app also is is, uh, is special for us because we have experts also talking on the app so we have a lot of people of the united nation who give their point of view on the subject so we think about the themes you know things that are dear to our heart and then we get people who are experts from all around the world sometimes it's an ambassador sometimes it's someone from the community someone it's a mayor <laughs> sometimes it's commissioner Ronelis, sometimes it's a it's etc so it's really people from all walk of life and who knows about that issue and uh, and that to talk about it. So that's what we do, big murals, I would say, with a purpose and with the idea to connect people and create conversations across the world. Social environmental justice is definitely our roots. Of course, we're still very much involved against uh, the, the, ch the child trafficking in general because that's our roots, but uh, but that's, yeah, that's and, literally. So let's talk maybe a bit about Houston and what yeah. we did here, big, our bigger change. Yeah, but just maybe to finish on what you were saying, couple of thing, things. First is that uh, what moves us, because I know it's one of the questions, is really to trigger change and also because we have a, a dear passion for art and we are aware because, you know, we grew up in cities where there was a lot of art that it really um, feed the soul, literally, it feeds the soul. And uh, we want people, the reason why we're doing outdoor museum is that we want people to realize that you know, uh, art and visual art is really feeding the soul and, and giving such a pleasure and inspiration, um, uh, sometimes a new breath in life. And uh, we have actually a lot of people who come to us and sometimes they, are, they have this mural in front of their building and it really makes their life uh, you know, sometimes better when they go through hardship and it happens, you know, life is made of everything. So it's a good to feel also that in addition to social environmental justice, we also make people's lives better. And there is also something that is a little bit transcendental, is to see how the artists, you know, they come with an idea and they bring it to life. And we have these themes that we want to talk about. And then you have people that come on top of it and have their own interpretation. And that's, that's diversity of opinion that makes uh, that's make the beauty of art. And diversity is really at the center of what we do. I mean, not only in the themes, but I mean, the artists come from everywhere. There's no local international artists. There's just great artists. Let's make it clear. And all with a heart. And when they come, they express it with their art. And in the curation that we do, we try to have artists with completely different styles. It can be a neo Picasso. It can be a, you know, futuristic style. It can be really classical. Uh, but the idea is then everybody in the street is going to find their style. And then they're going to love one. And then they're going to love another one. And this is how also we try to get the hearts. But uh, all of our creations also have a strong rooting in the community. There's no mural that we put out there that doesn't take into account the context of where they go architecturally, but also in the heart, in the community, who's going to be in front of it, who's going to receive it. Because unlike, and this is where it's very difficult, unlike in a museum, where you go and you pay, you know what you get there, you wake up with it. And people didn't ask for it at the beginning, but they wake up and they have it and you have to please everybody around. And that's very difficult in a sense because you're in the streets and everybody's different. So the idea to, of those murals is also to be able to speak to everybody. You have a beautiful thing. And then as Rodney Ellis always says, there's a deeper meaning. There's always a purpose in what we do. And, and there's also something like some, sometimes people say street art was born, you know, from the 80s with the graffiti. The reality is that this is not at all what we believe. We believe that street art is a fine art that was born thousands and thousands of years ago, you know, when they painted in caves uh, and maybe before. I mean, basically, when you think about it, you know, uh, the papyrus uh, that uh, the Egyptian use, you know, for, for the to mummy, for mummification, that's what you see actually on canvas. So I think that if you were saying to those people like two, three thousand years ago, oh, we're going to paint on canvas, they would probably think you're weird, but painting on walls was normal. So it's really a question of, of standard. I mean, we, we just, I mean, of course, the graffiti art has helped to develop the spray can and everything, but, uh, but it's not where uh, art was born, was born, art was born way, way longer ago, and muralism was born a longer time ago. So, uh, as Audrey was saying, we have series across the world. We have one we started in Houston, and again, it was an encounter. We, uh, we were painting our first wall in Houston during the pandemic about uh, zero hunger. So we had a series across the U.S. to talk about how hunger affected specifically uh, sp uh, African Americans in the U.S., and that was important for us to actually talk in all, the, all those cities. We, hen we ended up in the middle of the pandemic with an artist that just came back in season three now, Dragon 76, did our first mural, and... 
Commissioner Rodney Ellis was, was biking at that time, just stopped by and we, we met and found it great, got involved, triggered actually an inauguration for us in the middle of the pandemic, which was <laughs> which is great. And then the idea came out of doing that outdoor museum here and speaking about all those SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN, and talk about all those environments. So we started with the idea of doing maybe nine, ten walls, and it's been going on. So we're now in season three. Uh, we have 44 murals out there in central, I mean, in downtown Houston, which is in a downtown, very probably the biggest in the world, <laughs> talking downtown. Uh, so, and it's great because all of them are different. All the artists, local, international, all have had a different angle. And I think it's now taking really something to another level with the public. They are really interacting. They're really actually loving it. They're walking their city, which is great. They're enjoying the art and they are actually taking action. So it, it's great to see as curators, and I just hope we, we can do even more here and, and everywhere. I mean, um, it's been a blessing uh, to be here in Houston and, uh, and, uh, and be able to paint those walls um, in such a short time. <laughs> yeah, and we have been, I mean, the community has been very supportive. The wall owners have been very supportive. Now there are bus tours, so economically it's helping also the community because it develops tourism. And, um, and food traffic and uh, a, a new downtown which is vibrant. I mean, we, we heard some artists saying that they want to come now and live in Houston because they were it was the cool city to be in. And um, that's why we want. I mean, Houston has been very generous to us. Uh, people are, are super nice. There is a, an Houston open is mind. Unique. Houston is really unique in diversity and a lot of things. And, and and accepting also to talk about sometimes difficult topics. Yeah. And it's great, you know, it's not a, we need to talk, all of us, we need compassion, we need to be able to listen to each other and to speak and then yeah, we can agree to disagree or whatever, but it's good to have a conversation. Yeah, we believe that we are in a world that sometimes is more and more polarized and uh, it doesn't mean that we should shut down and go away with our own thinking. We should continue to share and continue to disagree and it's okay as long as there is a conversation going on and for us, the only issue to the only way to solve the issue of our society is by sparkling conversation and, and action. So yes, sometimes there are both subjects, and uh, Commissioner Rodney Ellis is actually allowed to speak about some subjects where maybe other people would have said, "Oh, it's controversial, whatever." <laughs> but we think that it's important to bring uh, as many subjects on the table. That's that's our role, maybe as a curator, producer, activist, artist, whoever whoever we can be called. But um, that's our mission and our calling. So street art for mankind, that's us too. <laughs> and that's what we do and with a lot, of, with a big heart. And we wake up every day, honestly, with a, I know, a lot of joy to be able to do this. We're very appreciative of having found probably our, our thing. Uh, we come yeah. up from a very, you know, corporate, very standard background. But that is, the, the calling was big. And, and today we're just, you know, I don't know, five, 50 to 70 walls a year. And we're just loving it. And let's continue. Right. There's a wall, there's a world out there to paint. <laughs> yeah, let's beautify the world and make it a, a better place and a child friendly world. <laughs>